The moon is a fascinating celestial object. In fact, I love it so much that I have made several videos on it. But the poor thing has also caused many people to gain their degrees from the unprestigious WhatsApp University. Listen to this talk by the famous spiritual guru or king of pseudoscience. You will see on full moon days and new moon days, many animals behave in certain specific ways simply because they're influenced by it. You know the whole ocean is rising. Hmm? When ocean, which is millions and millions of tons of water, is able to rise, when seventy-two percent of your body is water, you think it won't rise at all? On full moon days and new moon days, people get exaggerated levels of disturbance in their minds. If you're very loving, full moon day you will become more loving. If you're very joyful, on a full moon day you will become more joyful. If you're a little crazy, you'll get a little more crazy. Whatever is your quality gets little hyped on that day. So in today's video, let us dive into the lunar myths that the pseudoscience guru and other WhatsApp University graduates turn out, shall we? Don't forget, Brandonian is law. It is more difficult to refute rubbish than to create it. Welcome back to my channel where we are about to tackle some myths that might just make you howl at the moon or make you do a moonwalk. I'm Anand, your guide through the galaxy of truths and science. Please don't forget to subscribe to both Pale Blue Thoughts and the Rational Scientist channels without fail. So, let us go to a moonwalk. The full moon has been linked to crime, suicide, mental illness, disasters, accidents, birth rates, fertilities and werewolves among other things. Some people even buy and sell stocks according to phases of the moon, a method probably as successful as any others. Lunar myths are frequently presented in films and works of fiction. Many lunar myths are rooted in folklore. For example, the ancient Babylonians believed that a woman is fertile according to the moon. Such notions have been turned into widespread misconceptions about fertility and birth rates. The belief that there are more births during a full moon persists even today among many educated people. And not just childbirths, even the menstrual periods are often associated with the moon. Some think the light of the moon affects fertility in women, like this person here who calls herself a coach. Modern lighting came before the females, they were aligned with their menstrual cycle with the moon cycle. When the time of Purnima was time, then their ovulation phase was time, and when the time of the time was time, then they were in the menstrual cycle. Now, the fertility, natural fertility method is using the lunarception concept. Whatever the female fertility related issue, they will start to sync with their moon cycle with their periods, then they can do a lot of problems. For that, a simple technique that you can follow and that is that when it is Purnima, during that phase, at least 10 to 15 minutes of moonlight. You can work there, meditate, simply see the moon. You should have to be completely dark before sleeping. You should have to be dark before sleeping. You should have to be dark before sleeping. You should have to be dark before sleeping. If you have to be dark for 1 or 2 months, then periods can sync with moonlight. Now, the light of the moon is a very minor source of light in most women's lives and it does not have any effect on the fertility of women. It can at most, infuse some high-level energy to the homeopathic medicine called Luna, which is sugar of milk kept under moonlight and is supposed to be good for headaches, epilepsy and for regulating menstrual flow. But taking homeopathic medicines is certainly linked to lunacy. No doubts about that. The moon cycle of phases is a consistent 29.53 days, while the human female menstrual cycle averages 28 days, although it varies among women and from time to time with individual women. Now, there is another mammal, this one, an opossum, which has the same Easter cycle as humans. Now, would you call that a coincidence? If you do, then why can't you call the human cycle the same? People have figured that there was a connection between the lunar month and menstruation for as long as women have been getting their monthlies. The words month and menses are all words which have its roots from the moon. No less an authority than Charles Darwin believed that menstruation was linked to moon's influence on tidal rhythms. There is after all one animal whose Easter cycle and sex is linked to the moon. This one here, the lemur. 
probably the most widely believed myth about the full moon is that it is associated with madness. The word lunacy in fact comes from the word luna which means the moon. Like how our Sadhguru said in this video. Finally, there is a notion that there is a lunar influence on suicides, accidents, domestic violence, major disasters, violence like shootings and stabbings and the list goes on and on. Everything is tidally locked to the moon. Now let us see the actual truths with verified studies. Numerous studies have tried to find lunar effects on humans. So far, the studies have failed to establish anything of interest. Lunar effects that have been found have little or nothing to do with human behavior. While some studies have linked different moon phases to certain events, these findings have been, been consistently proven, making it premature to suggest a likely cause and effect relationship. Remember that correlation is not causation. Three researchers, Ivan Kelly, James Rotten and Roger Culver examined over 100 studies on lunar effects and concluded that the studies have failed to show a reliable and significant correlation between the full moon or any other phase of the moon with disasters or mishappenings. So the idea that a full moon turns us into lunatics. Breaking news, there is no scientific proof. It turns out the moon is just minding its business and so should we. Next is birth rates. Scientific studies, however, have failed to find any significant correlation between the full moon and the number of births. This study reported that they had analyzed birth days of 4,256 babies born in a clinic in France and found them equally distributed throughout the entire lunar cycle. A study reported 7,842 spontaneous deliveries over a five-year period at a clinic in Florence. They found no relationship between the moon phase and number of deliveries. Now let us dissect our sad guru's take on the tides affecting the water on earth and within our bodies. The lunar force is actually a very weak tidal force. A mother holding her child will exert 12 million times as much tidal force on her child as the moon. The idea that the moon should strongly influence our bodies because we are mostly water is not quite right. The earth is not 70% of water. The surface of the earth is. Also, the moon mainly affects open water, not the water inside our bodies, which is bound within cells. Also, the tidal force of the moon on earth depends on its distance from earth, not its face. Remember, even when the moon is a crescent or a full moon, the entire moon is still there. It is just that we cannot see it as sunlight doesn't fall on it fully during its phases. Higher tides do occur at new moon and full moons, but not because the moon's gravitational pull is stronger at those times. Rather, the tides are higher because then the sun, earth and the moon are in a line and the tidal force of the sun joins that of the moon at those times to provide higher tides. Now here is something that you may have not known. The moon's gravity affects the earth's crust leading to land tides. That means the land also rises a wee little bit though it is much much smaller than the ocean tides. It amounts to a few centimeters and are very slow occurring over the course of the day. The earth's crust is relatively rigid compared to the more fluid oceans. As a result, the land experiences only very subtle movements in response to the gravitational pull from celestial bodies. Many of the misconceptions about the moon's gravitational effect on the tides as well as several other lunar misconceptions seem to have been generated by one man named Arnold Lieber in a book The Lunar Effect which was republished later as How the Moon Affects You. In The Lunar Effect, Lieber incorrectly predicted a catastrophic earthquake that would hit California in 1982 due to the coincidental alignment of the moon and planets. But that did not happen. Undisturbed for the fact that no such earthquake had happened, Lieber did not admit his error in the later book. In fact, he repeated his belief about the dangers of planet alignments and wrote that they may trigger another great California earthquake. This time, he didn't predict when. Finally, the notion that there is lunar influence on suicide is also unsubstantiated. This study reviewed numerous researches done over nearly three decades and found no significant association between phases of the moon and suicide deaths, attempted suicides or suicide threats. 
These studies, like others which have failed to find anything interesting happening during the full moon, have gone largely unreported in the press. Now, the press has got a lot to do with these misconceptions spreading among people. With the media and Instagram influencers often repeating the idea that the full moon affects human behavior, it is no wonder many people believe it. Pseudoscientists tend to highlight stories supporting this notion as it makes for more interesting news and thus more views. While anecdotal evidence is easy to find, relying on personal stories can be misleading due to possible self-deception and confirmation bias. Even though such evidence isn't reliable, it can still be convincing to many. Many people believe in lunar myths because they hear them repeatedly from influential figures like the media, sadgurus and popular social media fear mongers. When a belief is widely shared, people tend to notice and remember events that support it while overlooking those that don't. For example, if someone thinks accidents increase during a full moon, they will remember accidents during that time but forget or dismiss other incidents. Over time, our selective memory strengthens the belief that the full moon is connected to various unrelated effects. That's a wrap for today, folks. The moon is not messing with us. It is just shining its celestial spotlight. If you enjoyed separating Luna fact from fiction, smash that like button, subscribe for more signs and ring that notification bell. And if you can achieve it, do a moonwalk. Until next time, keep it lunatically awesome. This is Anand signing off. Over and out.